Hello everyone, in this video tutorial I would like to show you how to determine the density of points given by a shapefile or in our case a text file, which means it is a you know, delimited text file. So um, we are here in the area of Indonesia and you will find the dataset on my website digitalgeography.com and as you can see here we have uh, directly in the center a volcano and we will now add the delimited text file so browse for the data file which is uh, ashpoints.csv just choose open the layer name ashpoints is fine for the moment and um, what is now important is maybe to use a spatial index which will increase afterwards processing time due to the fact that this text file has about 500,000 um, data points in it. So just press on OK. And now the data set will be read and uh, you have to determine the coordinate reference system afterwards. So it takes some time for my PC. And in fact, I'm not choosing the UTM zone 49N for this data set because there's some, some strange error with the Landsat data set uh, behind that. So you can see here uh, that all the ash points are directly above the uh, image of the volcano. And yeah, of course, these are a lot of points and um, by zooming in here, you can see that there are still so very or a lot of points. Uh, you can now see somehow the yeah the density of the points. So each cell of the Landsat image is uh, 30 meters in width, and um, these are really a lot of points. So what we need now for uh, determining the point density is a plugin called Heatmap. So go to Manage and Install Plugins. Go to Get More search for heat map oh no it's not in the get more section it's in the installed section so heat map uh, and just press on okay i think it is in uh, installed um, by default and you just have to check it so this is the plugin heat map we can close that now and we will go to raster heat map and heat map production and now you have to choose your input layer of course do it due to the fact that we just have one layer it is ash points we will now set uh, an output name, so it's heat map. Um, 1km, you will see why that. So um, yeah, it should be .tiff for the extension of the GeoTiff. Stick to the normal files like GeoTiff and Add as Imagine because the author of this plugin says that GeoTiff and Add as Imagine files works best and all the other file formats can can yeah shut the program down now let's go to the radios most of the tutorials you see on the internet says yeah yeah take the radius or like 100 meters or something like that that strongly depends on the kernel you're using and um, we will come to the kernel later on and normally the radius is uh, it's a circle and each point in between that circle will be counted and will determine some value to the point density. So given by 100 meters, you, you can afterwards say, okay, you have how many points per square kilometer? You know, you have to take some values like 564 meters, which is the radius of a circle with one kilo, square kilometers in area. So take this value above, about to, um, so you can state afterwards, okay, I have 13 points in an area of one square kilometer at that given location. And now let's go to the advanced section and you can determine here how something like the resolution of the, of the output image. So I'm now going here with 1000 and columns is uh, doubled as well. So they're stick to get, uh, together and cell size and X and Y section you can you can also change if you would like to. Now let's go to the kernel shape. There's a great article on Wikipedia you can use for getting a, an idea about the uh, about the kernel shape. 
we will stick here with aquatic B weight, which means that points near a location are more influential to the density of points than points that are more far away. You will see that afterwards in the resulting TIFF image, and I will and I will say something to uh, for the for the um, values in there as well. So we will use quartic B weight uh, first guess, and that's it. And just press on OK. Now the creation process takes some time due to the fact that it's a large area, 564 meters. He has to calculate a lot of distances from points to each other, and um, yeah, it's now creating the heat map. And um, you have seen some some parameters like uh, there's a weighting parameter and a certain radius parameter. If you have the corresponding data for that, you can use these parameters as well. At the moment, we are just um, yeah using the parameter from the from the from the um, kernel. And yeah, let's go to the kernel. B weight. Okay, there's the article for that. And you can see here how the kernels behave. And there's our big uh, qua yeah, quartic, I think, was it? Or B weight? Quartic B weight. There it is, yeah. And you can see that. Points are here in the middle, are nearly, nearly, um, or in, influencing the uh, the the value in the raster nearly with their whole amount. And points that are more far away here on this sides are not so influential. That means that you avoid some randomness in your data. And yeah, so here's the heat map. There it is. I will just add the points to the top of the map so you can see how this works. Yeah, so there's a given radius and from this point to the end of the black area it's 564 uh, uh, meters and um, yeah, we will now adjust that. And at the moment we cannot see so much so we have to work a little bit with the representation of that map. First of all, make sure to uh, check the histogram. So we will compute the histogram, and as you can see, the maximum values are about 13 something or 12.5. So we will use this value in the style tab over here, and we will switch to single band sposoidal color. And uh, yeah, we will prefer the yellow, orange, red color scheme. We would like to invert it, and the maximum value should be something like 13. Now press on classify and so you can see, oh no, we don't need the inverted version, as I can see here. So yellow is 0 and uh, 13 is um, dark red. Now just press on apply and OK. And now you can see uh, a smooth image from here to there and you have the center of the points at that location. What shall we do now? So to make it more distinctive, you can use another great plugin which is part of the GDAL, uh, GDAL processing toolbox, I think. Let's see, yeah, it's part of GDAL tools. And um, it is called con Contour um, Creation, so go to Rasta and Extraction Contour. Um, we will create a new shapefile which is called ISO lines. In fact, these are not contour lines, like 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 from a digital elevation model or something like this. It's it's only it's only a ISO line, and the interval between contour lines should be one. As you can see, we have values from one up to thirteen, so there shouldn't be so much lines in there. And we will create a new attribute for that. So these are the values, more or less, or let's say density. Density is fine, and we would like to load canvas into uh, or or load into the canvas when finished. So just press on OK. There we are. Good to close. These are now the uh, the easy lines. So these are below that value. You have values of about one. You 
can check that with the heat map. Yeah, so 0 0.3, 1.3, and so on. So, and in the center, all the values are above 12. So why is that, you know, not integer values? So you have a point here and it's influencing only its same location. So go to ash points and we, I'm checking that now. And um, let's go directly to the location of a point here. And now let's check the rest for the value. It is something like this, which is very, very low. And um, this is due to the kernel. So a lot of a lot of points at one given location increases the density. And if there's just one sparse point, it could also be a mismeasurement. So let's say you're going around and collecting stones and something like that, and you're collecting just round stones. And um, if you find a lot of round stones at one location, it's more reliable than finding, finding just one round stone in the countryside, which could also mean that you have just looked at the stone very, very short short time, and it wasn't round at all. So, um, yeah, so this point here is not as reliable as all the points in the center of the image. And, yeah, so that's it at the moment. I think we are finished. So we have the ISO lines, we have the heat map here. You can reproduce that heat map also with the vKernel function in the grass tools, but it's more complicated and I think this is more sophisticated uh, in a fully grown GIS environment. So thank you very much for watching. Take care and goodbye.